heart a ghost that hath come from the earth, or a phantom of night that hath no hollow, or one that lieth dead in the desert, or a ghost unburied, or a demon, or a ghoul, whatever thou be until thou art removed, thou shalt find here no water to drink, thou shalt not stretch forth thy hand to our own, into our house enter thou not, through our fence break through thou not. We are protected, though we may be frightened. Our life you may not steal, though we may be scared to death. Welcome to Scared to Death, Creeps and Peepers. Hello, Dan. Hello, Lindsay. Oh. <laughs> okay, hope, hi. Hope that Sumerian protection spell kicking off the show serves us well. I hope so. I can't wait to get our huge Sumerian flag. Oh, yeah, the here. tapestry? Yeah. Tapestry. Mm, tapestry. 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 Uh, thank you for listening or, or watching on YouTube if that's what you're doing. Uh, and if you can't watch a show on YouTube, just another reminder that now we are putting the, the photos that we reference on the show on the Scared to Death Instagram, which is just at Scared to Death Podcast. So you don't feel left out. You can you can sneak those at work. Exactly. And, uh, and thank you for the continued ratings and reviews. Uh, they're really motivating, and I noticed they have definitely gotten better recently. Not that they were ever bad, but it's just more – I feel like we're finding a nice flow here. That's nice. There's, there's a nice growing audience of people who like what we're doing, talking to Joe about that, our producer yeah. this morning, and it feels, it feels good. It feels good. I don't feel like the show is really going to shift tonally very much going forward. So it's one of those things if you're like, oh, man, I hope they change and do this. Well, pr- probably not. Sorry. Because we have got a, a few things, you know, just a quick a, a tone address. Um, every once in a while, we get like, you know, an email or, or, you know, a message on socials about like, oh, man, that story couldn't have happened. Oh, or, you know, like, no way. Come on. You're missing the point of the show if you're doing that. It's um, suspension of disbelief. This is not the place to be analytical right. or super critical. It's somebody saying something happened and that's it. We're just taking it at face value. We're, we're sitting here in a, in a scary room trying to get ourselves in the right mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like to watch horror movies at noon. I like to watch them at midnight. Right. And the same thing for this show. It's just fun to be spooked. And so if you know, if you want like a real hard-hitting investigative show, this, this isn't that show. No. And, that, and that's fine. You know, f- find a, you know, uh, another show that, that suits your fancy that way. Right. And let us be spooky and weird because that's where we're going to keep being here. Yeah. And just one story has to be true. That's what we always say. That's what we always say. Just one time. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. a lot of stories out there. We're gonna be, uh, I'll be telling two today. How many are you telling today? I'm telling two. Okay. Shadow people in one of my stories. Oh, also a version of a shadow person, the hat man in one no of mine. No way. Oh, mm-hmm. fuck. That's the worst. I know, the worst, the worst one. Uh, and also, um, thanks for checking out the new merch at bad, uh, badmagicmerch.com, our new store. So we, we have, yeah, fun stuff. We have a new tea. We have a new uh, adorable witch tea in oh, two different colors. A t shirt. T shirt, yeah. I was thinking, I'm like, we do? I didn't know we were selling tea. Yeah, we have tea now. Cool. We have, we have Earl Grey Death. Scary witch tea. <laughs> is it infused with particles of crystals? It's inf- no. Well, no, then in- I'm out. It's, infused, it's demon tea. It's infused with well, demon particles. Fucking, I'm out. I'm out. I only <laughs> drink tea with crystals. So I, I, I do have a hat man uh, tale, as I was saying. That's the first one. Little, little one. Little tale. And then the second one is a, a tale of a very tragic event oh. that, that definitely happened over a century ago in a small Iowa town. And, and I'll talk about some kind of creepy paranormal possibilities that follow that very tragic event. I don't want to give any more away. Was where was Sally House? Sally House was in Kansas. Oh, Kansas. Sorry, it's another Midwest. This is a, yeah, Iowa. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm I'm from Ohio, so people always do that. Like, oh, you know, the Midwest, like it's all the same. Sorry, sorry, Iowa, Kansas. That's okay. That's okay. Geography is not my strong suit. <laughs> And uh, and then we have some things to talk about at the end of the show. If you're going to stick around about our yeah. own, we had a little argument about um, oh. some some scary stuff. And I saw the the creepiest horror movie type dude, uh, more creepy than I've ever seen in my entire life today in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I'll explain that later. It was ridiculous. I can't wait to talk about how you were so mean to me. Uh, annoyed. Mean. I, annoyed. Mean. I was mean. annoyed. He was mean. I, I, I still sit on annoyed. Um. <laughs> All right. Are you, get, are you ready? Are you going to get your protection okay. blanket? Yeah. Your socks? I've, I've got my socks on. I've got some. I think they're bears. Bears. Okay. I think mm-hmm. I think now Polar at this bears. point, um, I have worn all of the pairs that I have. So if you are expecting <laughs> something new each week, I apologize. There are only so many fuzzy socks one girl can have. <laughs> but <laughs> always accepting more. So if you want to send them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I am ready. Okay. 
Oh yeah. So let's do it. I'm ready to be scared. Ready, ready to be scared. Okay. A mm-hmm, mm-hmm. L- little bit of tiny bit of setup for this. Just um, gonna start off with another story about the Hat Man. The Who most I no- hate the most. Most notorious entity associated with shadow people. Yeah, uh, your, your least favorite. Oh, I'm already scared. This is this is the one you probably least want to see in the middle of the night when I'm out of town, just standing at the foot of the bed, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I was already thinking, like, you haven't been out of town in weeks. We've been mm-hmm. together for so long. Mm-hmm. Just a couple weeks, I'm going to be all alone. Yep. I'm already losing my shit. <laughs> Quick refresher for those uh, maybe new to the show or, you know, just forgotten about this, the hat man. Typically appears at night. Uh, this entity usually dressed in either a long black trench coat or black three-piece suit. Uh, reported to always wear a black hat. Those who encounter him almost always report that the hat man has glowing red eyes. He's usually huge, very tall, a shadowy figure carrying with him a powerful sense of dread and doom. So you ready for this encounter? I mean... <laughs> as ready as you'll be. I guess. Oh, God. Time now for a tale called This Is Your Last Chance. A woman named Rebecca claims to have had her first encounter with the hat man back in 1978 when she was just six years old. And she claims that not only did she see the hat man, but that she also heard him. He seems to have threatened her. Rebecca grew up mostly in Missouri, and she spent parts of 1977 and 1978 staying at her grandmother's house in Independence. She said that, During this time in my life, my mother, sister, and I lived with my grandparents off and on due to our own circumstances and the fact that my grandfather was in and out of the hospital. Rebecca remembers other relatives staying in her grandparents' house at that time as well, and when other family would be over, she and her her sister would stay in a you know, spare bedroom that she otherwise shared with her sister, or sorry, like when there was other people over at the house, they would get moved from the spare bedroom she would usually stay with her sister in. Yeah, yeah, I got that. One night when this extra bedroom was taken, Rebecca and her sister slept in her grandmother's room. Her grandpa was in the hospital, and she had heard what at first she thought was just a terrible dream. She remembers that my sister and grandmother were sleeping in the bed like normal, and I was sleeping between the two of them with my head at the foot of the bed. And I had a terrible nightmare, one where the dresser drawers were opening and closing on their own, and ghosts and clothing were flying out, and Rebecca remembers waking up terrified. She then tried to wake up her grandmother, gently pushing her and tugging at her pajamas, but she was deep in sleep and she didn't come around. Rebecca said, I debated getting up and finding my mom, but I would have had to have have walked past the drawer from my dream and decided that was too scary. I turned my gaze away from the dresser and up to the window behind the headboard of the bed, and that is where I saw the man. The dark, looming hat man seemed to stand on top of the headboard. Or was he standing behind the headboard and just impossibly tall, stretching up and nearly touching the ceiling? Rebecca said the man was wearing a long flowing coat, a top hat, and carried a cane. He had no real features but was a solid object that blocked the light from the window behind him. I was terrified because there was someone else in the room and because I recognized it as non-human. Rebecca said that she and the hat man stared at one another for what felt like several horrible minutes. Oh, God. And then he lifted his arm and pointed directly at her. No! And then he said, This is your last chance. Yeah. Rebecca said that the hat man's voice was inhuman. It was loud, but it didn't fill the room. It filled her head instead. Impossibly flat with no residual sounds. It was as if every sound surrounding the words he spoke had been totally removed. And then the hat man uttered his cryptic threat. After the hat man uttered his cryptic threat, he put down his arm and then he just vanished. Just poof. The next day, Rebecca told her family about the encounter, and of course, they didn't pay much attention nope. to her claims. She says little kids are always filled with stories that grown-ups nod and smile while hearing. And then she added that she only vaguely remembers being afraid to go back into her grandma's room after that incident. She didn't bring up the Hat Man encounter again until her teens, and this time her family listened because someone else had also seen the Shadow Man. Oh, shit. She said that everyone else in her family believed in ghosts, and they found her story totally plausible, but no one was scared by it. Except for her aunt, who recoiled when she mentioned her hat man encounter because she had seen him too. Her aunt shared with her and the rest of the family that she had seen a man who looked exactly as Rebecca had just described in the same house back in Independence later that same year. And that she'd never talked about it until now. Oh my god. Until hearing Rebecca's story, she convinced herself it had all just been her imagination. But now she was positive that whatever she had seen was real. 
Rebecca says that her memory of her encounter uh, with the hat man scares her to this day. Well, yeah. And that when she's trying to figure out what he meant, and she's still trying to figure out what he meant when he said, this is your last chance. Rebecca's grandfather died shortly after she saw the hat man. Was the hat man telling Rebecca it was going to be her last chance to talk to him? She doesn't know. Or was he warning her about something horrible still to come? She hopes she never hears or sees the hat man ever again. I hope I never fucking see him. So just a we- weird, that one I liked, you know, a little story. Yeah. But I just liked it because of the aunt detail later. Right, right. Good uh, corroboration. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm already thinking about the hat man story that I'm going to tell you. And there was some... Yours is a hat man story too? Uh, yeah, there were... Uh, sh- yeah, and... Well, shadow person for sure. Yeah. I read through it a couple times yesterday. Okay. But then, you know, I have to block it out of my brain. Sure, otherwise, sure. I'll never sleep. Yeah. Um, but so many similar details. And that's the thing about shadow people and the hat man is it's like you'll get a story from Sue in mm-hmm. Wyoming and a story from Bob in Southern California and John in Australia. Right. And and they're all always very similar. Mm-hmm. Like there's a similar ominous feeling. There is a, the descriptions are always the same right and there's just no fucking way there's no way that every single person who claims to have had a shadow person hat man encounter right also has read all the stories and has taken the time like who takes the time to do that like oh oh this is what it's supposed to sound like okay i'm gonna write it like this like get the fuck out of here and with this phenomenon specifically i will say there's been like sleep analysis or sleep paralysis studies that have been done but, God, that's what my person talks about too. Right, but you know, like that, just because like this one part of the brain is activated by that certain thing, it's like okay, but what if it's activated because of some horrible thing happening? Also, it's like there's there's still room for like Ugh, maybe that's what you I know, think. even after the analysis and everything. And also, I'm sure, let's say to, to be devil's advocate, it, let's say that the, it is all scientific, no less terrifying for the person experiencing it. Right, because it's very real to you in that oh, yeah. moment. You're still seeing a horrible. I don't, either way. Like uh, demonic, supernatural, or just like, you know, uh, can be explained by brain chemistry. Yeah. I don't want to have it happen. Correct. It, it sounds absolutely horrible either way. Right. Well, because I think about like uh, Excuse me. at night when, when I can't fall asleep, which we'll discuss later. And I'm I'm looking at the corners of our room and I'm yeah. like, oh my God, what's here? I can feel something like your imagination gets going. Yeah. I do think like. What if I saw something? Oh, God. And recently I was thinking, yeah. like, maybe I do want to see something. Maybe it would give me some huh? piece of, like, okay, it is real. It is out there. But you're okay. But, like, you've been living 36 years without any interruptions. Right, like, right. why now? Yeah. But then also, I don't know, maybe a bad idea. It's just... Yeah. Uh, but the shadow person specifically, really... I got a couple spooky depictions of what shadow people may look like. Some new ones you haven't seen. Let's, I don't uh, want to look because I already have so many images stuck in my brain. Well, this is some. This I'll is, do it. This is somebody else's image of what a shadow person may look like. Fuck. Right. Can that you is ma- like. Uh, just the outline of some human shape in the distance. Oh my god! Can you imagine seeing that in the woods. Oh my god! Could you god. imagine seeing that in your anywhere, bedroom? Anywhere. Anywhere. In your bedroom when it's an arm's length uh, away. Yeah. That's what does me in. Right. Like in in the woods, I can kind of explain it away. I can okay. kind of say like, oh, that's the way this tree and the sun. The what sun, if it was moving though? Well, like or out in the yard. Oh, oh my god, god, damn it! Stop it. Uh, here's this next one. Another depiction. <laughs> Did not care for that. Uh, somebody else's. That would be the foot of your bed. Oh god, I have chills oh, all over my body. My god, just the outline of some Ooh, dude. I wish you could see my chills. They're terrible. Uh, here's another depiction of what the hat man might be. Uh, some people think it could be uh, like a bam <laughs> Kind of, kind of look with a weird hat. Could be. So Could be. you know, that's a scary. Uh, one more depiction of of the Thank hat man. You. Thank you for that. Some people think it could be, you know, Pharrell, you know, with his weird hat. Who do, do, who, who, do you remember when he was really into that hat? I do, and I do, and it hasn't stuck around, and with for good reason. Well, then there was who, like who a, okayed that? There was an who was like, dude, sweet. He pulled it off. If anybody, no, he didn't. Oh, I think he did. I don't think he did. I think I think he pulled it off better. I think it would look more clownish on most people. Mm-hmm. He did a good job for what it is, but at the end of the day, it's a super stupid hat. That doesn't bother me. Oh, and then he it also had like the, the more round version. Yeah, that one I was just like, okay, it's like a weird modern art piece on top of your head. He also but, slash very... kind of like a like a um. Uh, am, I, am I thinking of like Charlie Brown mm, mm-hmm. or like a <laughs> I don't know. brown derby hat? <laughs> he um. 
he's a very slight build. Mm-hmm. So then when he has that giant hat on his head. I couldn't pull that hat off. <laughs> you know, first of all, you have a giant head. If I had a bigger version of that hat. That hat would be so fucking big. I think if I was wearing that hat and I was, and somebody woke up and saw me at the foot of their bed <laughs> with that hat, I mean, they'd be scared like there's a random dude in their house, but also might laugh a little bit. Mm. It'd be, it would take away from the intimidation. I feel like if you wore that hat and some cowboy boots, people mm-hmm. would just think you're a shitty cowboy. Probably. Yeah. I think I think they would think I was a shitty cowboy no matter what <laughs> hat, boot, cowboy no, I wore. No, you could pull it off. I might be able to pull off a cowboy look. Maybe. 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 Let's not find out. Let's I'm, not find out. It's not my fantasy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, okay. I, that's going to sit with me, and I really regret you telling that story. <laughs> okay, well, this next one, this next one, a little more setup for this one. So I'll just get into the setup, and then we'll get into the scares. But it requires, uh, you know, it's one of those, uh, this is one of those stories, and we've done one, the similar, and I think I forgot to mention, it was in the fir- one of the first, first or second episode, uh, happened in Germany, Heide- Heide- Heidecker, well, I don't know, I don't want to give it away. But we've done, there's been a, a similar story we've told that happened in, in Europe. This mm-hmm. is uh, this is the American version, but okay. Anyway, okay. Now, now I'm remembering why I didn't want to mention that. I don't want to give anything away. Okay, so uh, stop. On Let's a, just go. On a quiet residential street in the small town of Villisca, Iowa, sits an old white house with a dark black history. If you just glance at it in passing during the day, you might think it was just another family home, a little rundown, maybe in need of a new paint job, but not that unlike any other home that lines the same street in the little sleepy southwest Iowa town. At night... You might get the chills. You might feel the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Something about the house could easily feel very off or wrong. You might uh, likely notice that no lights were shining out of the old house's windows. No sounds could be heard from inside the home. No one is home. If you dared to creep closer, you would see that the White House's doors and windows have been boarded shut and covered. A wooden outhouse sits on the back lawn, decaying, looking like it might collapse at any moment. What happened here, you may wonder? And maybe you'd start to walk away from the strange house, and maybe you'd start to walk away pretty quickly. The home is the site of an infamous tragedy, and while you can pay to visit the home, while you can pay to spend the night, no one has actually lived in this home for over a century. You can pay to spend the night there? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot less people lived in Villisca in general compared to uh, when today's story took place. Uh, today, Villisca has half the population it had 100 years ago, just over 1,000 people. It sits over an hour's drive from Omaha, the closest city. It's about an hour from the freeway as well. The railroad that once brought people into town closed down decades ago. It's not exactly a tourist destination. Villisca is now mostly some farmers, slaughterhouse employees, Ugh. retirees, and a few people who have figured out how to carve out some other kind of living. But in the early 1900s, Villisca was booming, a flourishing community fed by the arrival of a new railroad. Several hotels, restaurants, stores, manufacturers, even theaters complemented an economy based largely around agriculture. More than two dozen passenger and freight trains stopped at the depot each day, sustaining the town's growth and promising a bright future. The town had been laid out back in 1858 by D.N. Smith of the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. He'd named the town Villisca, which uh, he said meant pretty place or pleasant view, in the language of the area's original American Indian inhabitants. By the early 20th century, small family-owned businesses were prosperous and numerous, but the small town would soon be overshadowed, all the good things, by the horrific events that took place on the night of June 10th, 1912, in the Moore family home. Oh, so just one night? Yeah, a very bad thing happened one night. Uh, The Moores were a mid-sized family for the times. And because of the town's success, yeah, they were prosperous. Because of the town's small size, they were well known. Mm-hmm. The parents, Josiah and Sarah Moore, had four children: Herman Montgomery, who was eleven; Mary Catherine, who was ten; Arthur Boyd, seven; and Paul Vernon, five. I love the double names. Mm-hmm. Their neighbors uh, said that they were good parents and good Presbyterians. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sarah Moore even ran the Sunday school at the local church. Of course, she did. Her name is Sarah. Josiah and his family had bought the house in 1903. The home had originally been built in 1868, and they had planned to live there for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And they would live there for the rest of their lives. Unfortunately, the rest of their lives would come rather quickly to an end. Oh, God. Much sooner and a whole lot bloodier than anyone could have imagined. Shit. On June 10th, 1912, two local girls and friends of the Moore children, Ina and Lena Stillinger. Stop it. Mm -hmm, Ina and Lena. Sweet Lord. Nine and 11 years old, left their home for church early that Sunday morning. June 9th would become the last day that the Villisca wasn't known primarily for horror. 
The Stillinger girls planned on having dinner with their grandmother after the morning service, spending the afternoon with her, and then returning to her home to spend the night after the Children's Day exercises concluded. The Children's Day celebration was a church event that celebrated the end of the school year. Sarah Moore had helped organize it. Okay. Tragically, they did not go back to their grandmother's that night. The girls had been invited by 10-year-old Catherine Moore to spend the night at her home instead. Mm -hmm. Prior to leaving for the celebration, Mr. Moore placed a call to the Stillinger home to ask permission for the girls to stay overnight. Blanche, Lena, and Ina's older sister told Mr. Moore that her parents were both outdoors, but that she'd passed the message along to them. The parents never phoned back to say they had given permission, but it was a small town. Surely Ina and Lena would be safe at a neighbor's house. Uh. It was a safe town where nothing bad ever seemed to happen, but it was not a safe town the night of June 10th. And, the, and Ina and Lena would never return home. <laughs> the Children's Day program didn't end until 9.30 p.m. And the Moore family, along with the Stillinger sisters, walked home from the church. They entered their home sometime between 9.45 and 10 p.m. Okay, so kind of late. Kind of late. Dark. Dark. No one knows what happened next. <sighs> Time now for the tale of the Velisca axe murders. Oh. The next morning at dawn, a neighbor, Mary Peckham, stepped into her yard to hang some laundry. At 7 a.m. when the Moore children should have been starting their chores, she realized that not only had the Moors not even been outside yet, but that the house itself seemed unusually still. Mary Peckham walked up to the front door and knocked, but received no response. She tried to open the door, but it was locked from the inside. Not normal, in a little wholesome town where everyone generally left their doors unlocked. Mm -hmm. She went back into her own home and called Josiah Moore's brother, Ross. A little while later, Ross let himself into the house with his key and walked into a nightmare he could have never imagined witnessing. Shit. In the downstairs bedroom, he found the bloody, mangled bodies of the Stillinger girls, Ina and Lena, tangled in their bedsheets. They had been mutilated. He told Mary Peckham to call the town's peace officer, Hank Horton, which she of course did. While Hank rushed to make it to the Moore home, Ross found the rest of the Moore family. All of them with their skulls crushed by what doctors would later estimate were up to 40 axe blows. Oh, dear. Eight people had been bludgeoned to death, oh with the doctors God. estimating a time of death between midnight and 5 a.m. The doors were locked from the inside. How did this happen? What kind of monster would kill eight people, mostly children, with an axe? How did they get inside in the first place? None of these questions would ever be answered. The murder weapon, the bloody axe, was found in the guest bedroom near the bodies of the Stillinger girls. Oh. A pan of bloody water was discovered on the kitchen table, as well as some uneaten food. Two cigarettes were found in the attic, suggesting the killer waited patiently for the family to go to bed before creeping downstairs and bludgeoning each person to death. What the fuck? The murderer left Josiah so badly mangled that both his eyes were completely missing. Ugh. They had been, like the rest of his face, obliterated. Josiah had received more axe blows than anyone else, and strangely, he was the only victim that had been hit with the actual blade of the axe. What? The rest of his family and the Stillinger children had their heads bashed in with the blunt back of the axe blade. My God. The murderer had also searched dresser drawers for pieces of clothing to cover up glass in the entry doors so no one could see inside, and I find this most disturbing. The murderer had also covered up all the mirrors in the home. No way. What were they afraid of seeing? Oh, fuck, that's so creepy. What had they already seen? What might have been oh looking God. back and staring out from those mirrors? Stop it. There were deep gouge marks in numerous places on the ceiling from the swinging of the axe. Whoever it was, they were very strong and they were very angry. Who could swing that hard over and over again and not wake up anyone else in the family? How did no one scream and alert any other remaining occupants in the home? How did not one person make it out of that house alive? Did the killer have help from something not of this world, from something inside the mirror? Investigators believe that everyone had somehow slept through these gruesome attacks with the lone exception of Lena Stillinger, oh, who no. had fought back. Oh my God. She had defensive wounds. How could she have been the only one? How could someone so angrily walk through the home and swing the axe over and over and over again and not wake up anyone? Thump, 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 an axe, cutting and smashing and splattering skull after skull, and oh. only one girl wakes up. Over the next several years, investigators would look at a lot of different suspects. One was Andy Sawyer, 
According to his employer, he showed up looking for work the day after the murders, covered in dirt. When the story about the murders came out in the paper, Sawyer went off by himself to read it. He would talk about it for days, making everyone around him nervous with the details he kept repeating. Sawyer was an odd man. The other men who worked with him complained that Sawyer slept with his clothes on and was anxious to be by himself. They were also uneasy that Sawyer slept with his axe next to him. Oh, what? Another one even witnessed Sawyer once rubbing his head with both hands, and then he suddenly jumped up and said to himself, I will cut your goddamn heads off. What the fuck? And he made striking motions with his axe and began hitting some piles of wood in front of him. But when investigators looked into Sawyer, he had an alibi strong enough for the police to not arrest him. Hmm? Another suspect was Reverend George Kelly. The Reverend? Kelly was an English-born traveling minister in town on the night of the murders. He'd left town early the next morning, between 5 and 5.30 a.m., hmm. and he had a sordid history. As an adult, he'd been accused of peeping on young girls several times. He'd asked young girls to pose nude for him. In some reports about the axe murders, it suggested that Lena Stillinger had been sexually assaulted. Oh. Her nightgown had been pushed up uh, over her body. The lower half of her body left completely exposed. Doctors who investigated the crime scene said she had not been assaulted, but they weren't as good at investigations back then. Had someone lifted her dress up to take some perverse, morbid, and disgusting pictures, like Reverend Kelly was known to do. Just a few days before the murders, on June 8, 1912, Reverend Kelly had come to Villisca to teach the Children's Day services, which the Moore family had attended. He had seen the Moore uh, children. He had seen the Stillinger girls. He had talked to them. A few years later, when he was tracked down, he also confessed to the murders. He confessed what? twice. But he was discovered to be mentally ill. And while he would end up being tried for the murders twice, he would uh, recant his confession before the first trial, and he would never be found guilty. Another suspect, possible serial killer, William Blackie Mansfield. Some investigators believe that Mansfield had murdered his wife, infant child, and in-laws with an axe two years after the Velisca crimes. Okay, okay. Three days before the Velisca murders, Mansfield also suspected of having committed several axe murders in Paola, Kansas. Oh. Mansfield may have also brutally axed Jenny Peterson and Jenny Miller to death in Illinois. Each crime site accessible by train, all the murders carried out in the same way. Hmm. There had actually been a lot of axe murders in America in the early days of the 20th century. Apparently. Nine months before the Velisca murders, H.C. Wayne, his wife and child, Mrs. A.J. Burningham, uh, had also been chopped to death in Colorado Springs. Just like in the Velisca murders, bed sheets were used to cover the windows to prevent passerby from looking in. Also, just like the murders in Villisca, the murderer in Colorado Springs had wiped the blood off his axe and covered the heads of the victims with sheets. But Mansfield was never put on trial. Why? And actually, he sued the investigator who accused him of all these terrible crimes, and he won the lawsuit. After that, private investigators and law enforcement seemed to have lost interest in the case. Whoever killed eight people in Villisca got away with murder and will likely never know who did it. As the years went on after the murders, Velisca steadily became less prosperous. Many of its houses fell into decline and disrepair. Empty storefronts soon lined the silent streets and the population plummeted. A few cattle slaughterhouses are the main employers in a town mostly known now for the slaughter of eight people. After the murders, the house would pass through the possession of eight different owners, none of whom seemed to want to hang on to it for very long. None of whom, to my knowledge, actually lived in the home. Oh. The most recent acquisition occurred in 1994 by Darwin Lynn. Darwin and his wife successfully restored the house to its original condition at the time of the murders, removing all of the modern amenities. They even put period-specific furniture in the rooms. Devoted paranormal investigators, they scattered the house with 20th century uh, children's toys to give the young undead occupants they believe to still live in the haunted home something to play with. Oh my God, that's so weird. And many do believe this home to be haunted. On April 9th or 29th, 2006, 2006, four members of PRISM, Paranormal Research and Investigative Studies Midwest, and three guest investigators spent a night in the Velisca Axe Murder House. No way. And things got real creepy real quick. Oh, I bet they sure fucking did. As the night wore on, each person claimed to feel tiny hands tugging onto their clothes. Oh, God. Especially around their collars. One person felt a hand grip his chain necklace and give it a hard pull. Were these the hands of the murdered Moore and Stillinger children? The investigators also witnessed a light fog fill up the master bedroom. 
They distinctly heard a piercing train whistle, even though no trains run near the property anymore. What? They watched strange fog move from room to room just as the killer may have once moved. Once the fog dissipated, they heard the sound of something dripping. Were they hearing the sounds of dripping blood? The team gathered in the parlor room downstairs, and while they were down there, they heard noises from the upstairs bedroom. Thuds and bumps echoed throughout the house. Thump! 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 Was it someone jumping off the bed? Was it children playing? Or was it the sound of an axe hitting the ceiling Ugh. or caving people's heads in? Fuck me. At about 2.45 a.m., one team member witnessed the closet door in the children's room upstairs open and then close on its own. Shut up. There was a candy necklace hanging on the closet door handle, and it moved and rattled against the door as the door opened and closed. In the bedroom, another investigator saw what appeared to be tiny, pale fingers. No, get the fuck out. Reach out from inside the closet door. They appeared to slide out from underneath. Oh my God. Others saw a faint glowing coming from a bedroom closet. Maybe creepiest of all that night, Prism Paranormal founder David Pierce Rodriguez claims to have recorded audio evidence of the ghosts of the Moore and Stillinger children and their desperate attempts to communicate with the living. Shut the fuck up. A few paranormal websites who say they've listened to the EVP recordings claim to be able to hear the voices of children talking to one another. And at one point, one of the children can clearly be heard saying, he's going to get us, Paul. Oh, my God. Paul was the youngest child in the home that fateful night. Oh, my God. Over the years, numerous individuals who have paid to spend the night in the Moore house have claimed to see a man stalking the halls, dragging an axe behind him. They say they've heard the whimpering cries of children, and one visitor claims that he became trapped in a closet, banging to get out while some unseen force held him inside, feeling the touch of tiny hands. Oh, God, that's creepy. And then in 2014, paranormal investigator, or a paranormal investigator, was actually stabbed in the Velisca house and nearly died. Shut up. Robert Lorson Jr., a 37-year-old paranormal enthusiast, visited the house with his team of amateur paranormal investigators. He went off alone to look at the master bedroom and then a few minutes later called for help on his two-way radio. His companions found him stabbed multiple times in the chest. First responders would label the wounds as self-inflicted. I wondered that. But were they really self-inflicted? According to Larson's team, the incident happened around midnight, possibly at the same time of day when the 1912 murders began. Did a malevolent force possess Larson and force him to stab himself? Did it simply drive the knife straight into his chest over and over again? Did something come out from one of the mirrors like it may have done a hundred years before? Lorston eventually recovered from his wounds, but I'll bet he never spends another night in the Velisca Axe murder house where encounters are reported to continue to this day. Fucking fuck. <laughs> Creepy tale. The little hands. Can you imagine those touching Oh my you? God. Oh my God. Pulling at your clothes. When you started this story, I was like, oh, like if the show ever like goes far enough and we're able to do live scared to death. Like I've mm -hmm. always said I want to do them in supposedly haunted locations. Mm -hmm. That is off the fucking list. No fucking way. I'm not yeah. getting stabbed. And I don't want tiny little. Oh, oh, oh God. Can you just like. Yeah. Little hands. I know. I know that does make it creepier. A uh, couple pictures for context. So we understand this. This first one. Is the Velisca Axe Murder that House. That house is creepy as shit. I know it really is. I mean. And it could just be that it's like black and white. Sure, and, you sure. You know, all the things and like you know what you know about it. Mm -hmm, but you're like, yeah, that's a that's a haunted house looking house. I feel yeah. like it looks like there's a shadow of a person in the door. Oh my God, I do too. Yeah, I think it's the way the blind, uh, the, the, I can't remember what that's called. But um, yes, yes. Uh, the this, what? I can't remember the cur curtains. Oh. With little curtains there. Yeah. Well, there wouldn't be curtains on a front door, babe. Oh, okay. Uh, this next one is the attic where the killer was believed to have possibly hid. <sighs> Man, those old attics are so creepy. So creepy. Uh, and then this next one, this is the bedroom where the Stillinger girls were found murdered and where the axe was found. But it's like modernized in there. Well, no, that's that actually is from the period. That's just the way uh, things uh, would have looked back then. What year was it? Uh, 1912. Huh. Little chest and stuff at the foot of the bed. And then this I feel like that looks way more recent this than 1912. La this last one is one suspect I did not mention, so a little bit of extra stuff. This is uh this is a uh, German shepherd that's mm -hmm. obviously pretty handy with an axe. He's very good. I I he, love He must have opposable thumbs. I just love what is out there on the internet. I did, I literally googled like dog with an axe and I had several pictures to choose from. Thank you internet. 
<laughs> that I just thought was so ridiculous. Just a dog, just chopping some firewood. It's fine. Completely mm-hmm. normal. God, Penny, I wish our dogs could do that. Penny and Ginger do it all the time. Sure, yeah. sure. No, they're amazing. <laughs> they are top of the breed. Oh, man. That story is fucking terrifying. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Okay. So what are the odds that those two girls would spend the night? Lena and Ina or whatever. Right. Dina, Shnina, Mina. I know, Lena, Ina, yeah. Uh, w- what are the odds? Mm-hmm. And their poor parents, mm-hmm. right? Who like didn't call and approve it, oh but God. didn't disapprove it. Can you just imagine the guilt? Oh yeah. Well, and I'm sure like <sighs> nothing it's, it's, like that would happen in a place like that before. You know. Well, no. Like I just think about like our kids have sleepovers all the time. Oh my God. You never. You're the brutality of that night. Yeah. Eight people. It, it freaks me out in the same way that the Amityville story freaks me out, which we haven't done on this show yet. We may do someday. I, I talked about it on Time Suck. Um, we may have done it during like a little beta episode before oh, we released it. I was like, it. I know yeah. that story. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there was that one. If uh, uh, I know it hasn't been released. And we, and we may never release that one. We may redo we were, it. We were just testing. We're figuring out the format. Yeah. But uh, I told you that story. And there was that, you know, it's, it's just what always struck me odd about that case was that I believe his name is Richard DeFeo Jr., I believe. But this Richard DeFeo. You know, who was uh, convicted of, like, you know, killing his family in that house before all the hauntings began. It was the same thing where it's like his was with a gun, with a, mm-hmm. a Marlin rifle, mm-hmm. I believe. But he shot all these – and, like, they were all found in their beds. It didn't, no it didn't appear up. like they'd been placed there after death. So it's like, how how do you sleep through that? The right. toxicology reports came back where, like, nothing was found. And the same – I know this is an axe, which is – yeah, a little quieter, but I mean... You're still screaming. And you're still walking around the house, a quiet house in a quiet town at night. It's not like there was a bunch of... Uh, it's not like they had the radio going right. at night. Uh, it's not like the air conditioner was really giving you some background noise. It, things are quiet back then. Okay, except... Creaky. Yeah. Well, I just think about our house. Mm-hmm. Okay, our, we're split level. Mm-hmm. Now, when the kids wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I hear them and I wake up. You sleep through it every night single time i have woken up two kids coming like a kid will come in our room yeah. to tell me that they're sick you never wake up i wake up every single True. time but they found ceiling marks where the axe like like it maybe like he'd hit the ceiling kind of swinging the axe that's not quiet right but neither is kyler getting up and walking to the bathroom right right our house is creaky and you never hear it and i think about okay and i, and I think about like the couple okay if josiah was hit with the axe first mm-hmm. how did his wife not wake up when splatter hits her from yes. her husband's and just scream, even just for a brief moment. And how does that scream? I don't know. There's just a lot of it is but, weird to me. But then if the little ghost kid, Paul, or he says like, Paul, they're going to get us. Right. So then that would indicate that someone did know something was going to right, happen. Right. If that, yeah. If that is, so yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe she did scream. And then what? Yeah. Okay, but also... But they were found in their room. Like, they weren't found from what I you know, read about the investigator. They weren't, like, scattered around the house. There was no... Investigators believe that all... the Based on the way their bodies were found, that all of the kids were killed in their sleep, you know, except for either Lena or Ina. You know, like like one of the Sillinger girls. hmm So, which tells me that they didn't, you know, get up. I, I don't know. The whole thing is just so creepy to me. Well, kids, though, are different, too. Like, where if they hear something scary, they're... They might hunker down further in their beds. Mm-hmm. Oh, my mm-hmm. God, those poor kids. What if they were awake? And then you see some stranger with a bloody axe come into your room. My God. I think the only redeeming part of it is that one blunt blow to the head, and you're probably out. I hope so. That's all you can hope for. Okay, now. The mirror. Why? How? How mm. does this person get into the house and before the, the murders even start happening, covers all the mirrors with bed sheets? Right. Where did you get the bed sheets? Did you bring them with you? Did you take them out of the closet? And if other little kids were spending the night in that house, wouldn't the parents have gone into like the linen closet to get extra bedding out I for the know. kids that were spending the night? And wouldn't you notice that other things were missing? I don't I know that is weird. That is weird. And the and the windows I get for motive for the kid. Like you don't want to have but somebody. How do you do that without anybody hearing you? I know that's yeah. because how are you getting it to stay? Were you hammering it in? No. Were you just like draping it over the window? A window still is not if you went to our house right mm-hmm. now and took a sheet and tried to hang it over a window, it wouldn't fucking stay. True, true. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't get it. I mean, I guess if you had curtain rods, maybe like over the curtain, but if there was curtains, then you wouldn't need to put the sheet up. Yeah. So very confusing there. Yep. Something about that really bothers me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fucking 
mirrors. I know that's the detail, and I, and I looked Ooh. for it at first. I was like, wait a minute, did I just add that? And in a couple of accounts, because I mean, there, there, it'll say windows, which makes sense to me. Yeah. But then I was like, I mean, the, the mirrors. And yeah, that's that's written in a few reports, and that is just a weird because that that doesn't speak to helping get away with it. That speaks no. that speaks to maybe you don't want psychology. I guess it could be like you don't want to see yourself doing it. I guess, but, but also I don't know. My brain just goes to monsters. Yeah, just cause, just because I have my own thing with mirrors, but I'm like, oh, oh yeah. my god, ah! It makes so the story that you were thinking of was the the Hinterkaifeck farm. Yes. Oh, good memory. Yes. Yeah, Hinterkaifeck. Uh, I'm amazing. Good job. Yeah. yeah. And that was really creepy too, where if you haven't listened to that episode, I can't tell you which episode number it is off the top of my head, but it's either one or two. It is in the first two. It was two. very early on. Yeah. Similar kind of thing where like, did mm-hmm. somebody hide out in the house? How was everybody right. killed without other people? Because didn't they go out to the barn? That was a weird when they were killed weird... over a longer period of time, like one by one by one. And all Ugh. and a weird detail of that one. And I love that I wanted to call it the Heineken murders. Heineken, right. Hinterkaifeck. Hinterkaifeck. Same, same. Is, is that they were um, supposedly each uh, killed. It was like a smaller, it was like this little German pickaxe and it was like one blow to the head. Right, so, so it, was, it was very precise. This one was way less precise, what? over forty, roughly forty swings. Well, and then the the eyeballs God. of the dad. That just paints a picture where like his head was obliterated. Like I flat, he flattened his head. I mean, that was uh, just speaks to anger. I don't know. So weird. So weird. And I don't feel like there's a valid suspect. Not really. I mean, I think that they were investigating and they were trying to figure it out, but I never got the feeling that any one of those people, they just didn't feel like they did it. Right. You know, creepy mm-hmm. reverend guy. Police investigations creepy. were uh, not great back then. I will also say because right. they had they had very limited, few tools to work with, limited they, resources, they no fingerprints, no DNA. You know, there was like a peace officer. There really wasn't a dedicated police force. There, right, there weren't detectives in towns. Right, so you know, it's just some dude who it's like, all right, you're the guy who has to come talk to people when there's a bar fight. You know, it's not it's, right. not, it's not like he went to an academy. Right, it was just Hank Horton. Who probably Hank what Horton, I think was the guy's name. Oh, I was. <laughs> I thought you said something else. I thought you were making some like pop culture reference. I was like, I don't know what you're saying right now. <laughs> what? What kind of pop, just some weird like modern name? <laughs> well, no, I just thought like you were referencing like a oh. like you called like Andy Griffith and he comes. Like, oh yeah 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 like, yeah. What? Now just some so who and knows? So could have been Horton here's, here's a who. who? Yeah, yeah I, I got very confused for a second because I'm just thinking about this story. It could have it could have been one of those suspects, you know, very very easily. And, well, and then what about the investigations? Okay, so let's talk about staying at the house. Right. How much does it cost? I didn't look into that. I didn't look into that. And there the, is a website now. I mean, it, it is like. A, you know, the town's not known for much anymore. I right. mean, you know, it's a, it's a very sleepy town. One of those towns that was hurt first by the train going away. Right. And then also by the interstate being built, not near it. So it's just off the beaten path. There's mm-hmm. no reason to really go there. It, it's like the main tourist. Des- so there is like a little sign outside uh, and there is a website for the house right. where you can, I didn't look up the fees, but yeah, you can definitely rent it out. A, a lot, like same with the Sally house. I think a lot of these haunted homes, you can stay the night if you want to. That's uh, I don't think I could spend the night. Them. Could you? I don't know. I don't Ooh. know. I mean, it, it depends. Oh, my God. It depends. Like, alone? No, oh, thank you. No, thank you. Like, if I had to be in the attic alone and no one else in the house, fuck, hard no. Hard. Hard, hard no. fucking no. Now, if there's a group of us, I am kind of that safety in numbers. Define group. Because uh, I would need, like. At least three. Oh, fuck. I was like, I need, like, a dozen. At least three. Because I'm weird that way. I'm the same way about swimming in the ocean because, you know, I have a weird thing about mm-hmm. sharks. It's mm-hmm. very irrational, I know. I, yeah, that one I'm actually more afraid of. But if, I, but if, I'm, a, if I'm in a big group, yeah. part of me thinks well, I'll probably get somebody else. Okay. And if, I like like the, if you stand at the yeah. center and then everyone stands around you and but you now, move actually, into an amoeba. Actually, now saying that, no. No, I don't even want to be out there at all. But, but I feel a little better. But in a haunted house, I would feel better if there's more people. Yeah, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, oh nice, oh, yeah. good job, Joe. Thank Joe you, just Joe. Uh, pulled up. Yeah, that's the that's the new yeah like little situation they got going there. So they've cleaned it's it up. Quite the sign. Hmm. I'm sure the people who live in town know, really love it. I know. I have thought about that. If you're just like in the neighborhood where it's like kind of a kind of a bummer, where it's like the only tourists coming through, or just like I want to see where these murders took place. Look at that window on the bottom. Far I know, left. the dark one. I know, it, it is still, I mean, and again, like you said, maybe just because of what you know, it's super Yeah, creepy. yeah, because otherwise it might be like a very cute grandma house. Mm-hmm. Um, that prism group. Yeah. So it sounds like they had quite the experience. Mm-hmm. But when you started to tell about that second group, mm-hmm. and you said he was stabbed, my immediate thought was, 
would someone go that far to stab themselves for the story? But but then when you said a yeah. chest wound, because I thought like, oh, like a thigh wound. First of right. all, I mean, I'm not, I could never stab myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would have to be a life or death situation. And, but. and full disclosure, that I, I know this is not like analytical, but just like if for people watching, if you, if this, this is a more well-known story, mm-hmm. uh, when they did look into that guy yeah. who stabbed himself, he was having some problems. Oh, so he, he did stab himself. Well, yeah, you just said that think. guy. That's was, what they think. Yeah. I, I said, but there, there, there may be a little bit of motive where um, he had had some financial uh, things go really wrong. And I believe if I'm remembering correctly, it was like a recent divorce. But there was like a series of things that had mm. happened. His life was in shambles. I see. So there is that. But then there's, if you want to get like, you know, on the spooky side. Right. It's like. Would some entity want to go after somebody who's already on the edge? Right. Thinking that maybe they're a little easier. Like, like what if there's a little voice in their head all of a sudden yeah. be like, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You should Stab do yourself. it. Nobody wants you. Nobody loves you. I mean, if they're, if you're talking about demons, why wouldn't they prey on somebody who's a little bit more vulnerable? Yikes. So many different things to look at. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Spooky. Okay. Do we see all the photos? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what do you got for me? Hat man. Okay. Shadow person. Let's, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, let me just grab a grab a quick drink. Yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. And then uh and then after and after Lindsay's stories, we'll share some our little arguments. And and, and I want to tell about the creepy dude. Yeah, I want to hear about the creepy dude. And I have a hilarious update. Truly hilarious. Okay. Do not let me forget. It okay. is in fact I'm just gonna take this out as a reminder because okay. you are you're gonna say, Oh god, Lindsay, that's so you. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so I, I'm glad that you talked about shadow people because it's a good reminder that that is one of my biggest fears. Yeah. Shadow people, aliens. Yeah. I think those are like my top two. Yeah. Mirrors, kind of, but not the way they bother you. Yeah. Um. So, you ready? Do you have your... I'm okay. I'm I was just making sure. Hey, Dan and Lindsay, Dustin here. Huge fan of the new show and member of the Cult of the Curious. Thanks for coming over. I never told anyone this story before, but after the last episode, I feel I have to tell someone. Listening to the last episode with the encounter of the hat man Mm -hmm. and having listened to the time suck episode on shadow people, I feel the need to share my story with you guys. Before the time suck episode about shadow people, I never knew that other people have seen and have been attacked by these entities. I don't know why, but I never bothered to learn more about them. I simply wrote them off as a figment of my imagination and my mind playing tricks on me. Mm -hmm. I suffer from sleep paralysis episodes, and I have since I was in high school. I'm now 27. The nature of these episodes remained the same for most of my time experiencing them. I would see shadow people. Now, I'm a scientist and a fairly logical and rational person, or so I think. Okay. So there's no way these things could be real, right? Right. These are just visual hallucinations brought on by my sleep paralysis. Or at least that's what I thought. Oh, man. A couple of weeks ago, something very different happened. I can't get it out of my head. This encounter with the shadow man was something out of a nightmare made real. Let me tell you my tale of the shadow man. This night of particular shadow man visit was nothing out of the ordinary. My wife and I were at home in the evening after work, We played with our son, we ate dinner, relax, and wind down from the day. We went to bed and did our usual last checks of Reddit or whatever social (laughs) media news, kissed each other goodnight, and fell into sleep. My eyes now opened slowly. I don't know what time because I don't know how long I'd been asleep. And before this moment, it could have been minutes or even hours since I'd fallen asleep. It didn't matter because I couldn't move my arms to check my phone. I couldn't move anything, I soon realized. I was completely paralyzed. Not even a moment after realizing this was another sleep paralysis episode, I felt a presence. Something is near. Something is evil, and I can feel it. The corner of the room is different this night. The darkness in that area is heavy and deep. It felt like I was staring into a bottomless abyss. The blackness then started to take shape in a humanoid form, and stood about six and a half to seven feet tall with long, skinny arms and long Uh. fingers. It was so clear, and never before had I seen a shadow person take shape, nor had I witnessed one with such clarity. His entire body was black and heavy, but his face, his face was 
a different kind of shadow. It was deeper and heavier than his body, but it had no features. No eyes that I could see, and yet I knew he was looking at me. It felt as though I had locked eyes with death itself. An absolutely overwhelming feeling of dread, hatred, and malice filled the air and my body. My heart now racing so fast it might burst. My body tried to enter fight or flight by taking in more oxygen, but I can't. My body is still paralyzed, and I can't take the breaths my brain is trying me to, trying to tell me to. It feels like I'm choking, and I can't breathe, and I think this must be what it feels to literally be choked with fear. The shadow man then begins to move. Very slowly and very deliberately in my direction. It moves like something pretending to be human. It's disjointed and and almost off balance. It's coming for me. It's maybe eight feet away. Within moments, it will be upon me and I am powerless to resist. It approaches the side of the bed where my head is lying. He is inches away from me. I try to look away. I wanted to escape this hell, even if it cost me my life. You cannot comprehend the hatred and evil I felt in the room right in this moment. His face, if you want to call it that, suddenly and instantaneously appears next to mine. It was as if he knelt down close, but I didn't see him move. In a low, deep, half growl, half static voice, he commanded, look at me. In that instance, my eyes snapped back to him and then he vanished. No trace was left of him. The evil and dread that once choked the room was now gone. I sat up straight, gasping for air, drenched in sweat. This was the most recent time I encountered the Shadow Man, but somehow I know it will not be the last. Oh my god. What a, what a terrible, like, even if best case scenario, uh-huh. that, that's all in your head and it's just some kind of nightmare, what an insanely specific, very real, disturbing, where, where it's like, if I had that nightmare, like how would that not just fuck your sleep up? I, I, I feel for like I, I would just ages. for a long. I would reflect on it as I'm falling asleep, be like, "Oh my god, is it going to come back tonight?" Mm-hmm. And I feel bad. It made me feel bad for people who have like recurring nightmares of, of those kinds, oh, yeah. like night terrors. Night terrors over and oh over god. and over. It's like, oh, what a what a terrible existence that would be. Yeah, where you're so tired mm-hmm. and you're so worried about falling asleep because you're going to see something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and again, uh, the details. Well, yeah, and I love that he like says you're like I'm a logical person, I'm a right, scientist. Right. I know that I have sleep paralysis, but this thing was different. And and, and I mean, Man. I even get the feeling from him that he kind of knows it. It could possibly still just be the sleep paralysis. Right, but it feels so real. Something felt very different for him that night. Yeesh. 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 Man, God. Yeah, that stuff. That stuff just makes my mind go to that place where it's like. And again, like during the day, you know, like I'm more analytical and stuff. But just if I let my mind float to that possibility of like, what if there was this whole other dimension mm-hmm. right next to ours that is a fucking nightmare? What if? Like like there could be multiple dimensions, but what if them is like super evil? Yeah. What if like you were thinking about that, trying to go to sleep and you were trying <sighs> to tell me about it and I just told you to ah, shut up and go to sleep? <laughs> more, more on that later. Okay. Okay. Butthead. Oh <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Uh, you just wait. Okay. Um. So our next story takes yeah. us to Atlanta, hot Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um. The story gave me the creeps because it made me think about. Uh, it takes place on a little hike that this couple went on, uh, and it made me think about the hike that I go on with the kids on Tubbs Hill, just here yeah. in Coeur d'Alene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember this, but um. They found some human remains up there. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They're, they absolutely did. Last year in April, they found human remains up there, and they dug up the bones. Like, somebody found it when they were on a hike up there, and they um, they had, yeah, Tubbs Hill was closed for a while, a couple weeks at least. Okay. They sectioned off, you know, wherever they found it and removed the bones, and they, um, they were sending it off for analysis because they said the bones could be anywhere from 200 to 1,000 years old. Oh, whoa. No, I did not hear that. But wow. W- well, and like where we live, you know, there is a strong um, American Indian population. Sure, so, I sure. mean, for all we know, it could be, I mean, I don't know this about Tubbs Hill. I don't know the history of the hill. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess it could be old burial grounds or right. just n- not even burial grounds, just, you know, uh, from a different time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this story, I don't know why, but like when I was reading this, it just made me like think of that. And I was like, okay. yeah. Okay. You ready to go to Hotlanta? I am. All right, let's do it. A few years ago, my wife, 
brother-in-law Sam and I took our four dogs on a walk to Sweetwater Creek State Park here in the metro Atlanta, Georgia area. The park is entrenched in Cherokee Native history. Uh, they were upended and set upon the tale of tre- of tears. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As well as a Civil War history here. There is a museum with many artifacts from both times on display, as well as a massive ruins from the old textile factory that was destroyed during Sherman's March and uh. destruction of Atlanta. A really fascinating place, as well as a hotbed for paranormal activity. Contrary to these last few statements, none of these events were on our minds when we set out to take our dogs on a walk this day. Okay. There are several hiking trails to choose from, ranging from easy, which is the most popular, to strenuous, which is rarely traveled. Since we were wanting to let our dogs go off leash, uh, we chose the latter trail titled the Yellow Trail. Okay. This particular trail is separate from the other trails. It brings us over a large bridge, into the woods, and up a steep, rocky hill. Halfway up the hill, my wife and I let our dogs off leash and allowed them to chase after my brother-in-law while we held back. It was mainly an experiment to see how far they'd go before they realized we weren't with them. Turns out they would go on forever, which that's, yes, (laughs) Mm -hmm. that's why we don't let dogs off leash. My wife and I continued hiking up the hill, talking about how surprised we were that the dogs had never turned around to see if we were following, as they're Mm -hmm. very loyal dogs, or at the very least to come back to find us. We had finally crested up the top of the hill when we started to become a little worried that we couldn't hear nor see Sam or our dogs. <coughs> Excuse me. Not only that, a strange, eerie silence seemed to fall around us. No birds tweeting, no uh. trees rustling, no scampering about, nothing. Just my wife and me walking along the trail. It almost felt like our ears were clogged by how silent the woods had become. We began to call after our dogs as well as to Sam, all to no avail. The atmosphere felt thick and heavy, and when not a few minutes before it had been a crisp autumn morning, we got to a point in the trail where we could look down the hill and see parts of the trail that we would eventually get to. And there, sitting on a bench, was my brother-in-law and our dogs, waiting for us. My wife called down to him in frustration, asking if he had heard us calling to him, to which he replied that he hadn't. Upon hearing our voice, our dogs whipped around as if they didn't even know we were there and happily ran up to to greet us. Weird. Immediately, it was like a fog had lifted. Nature sounds came flooding back in, the atmosphere felt clearer, and we had our dogs back. We called down to Sam that we were going to continue on the trail and for him to wait for us there to come to him. Everything went well until we got to Sam, who asked my wife, who was that man that was standing at the top of the trail with you? Oof. Stunned, we answered, there was no man with us, and proceeded to tell him about our experience on the trail, how quiet it had become, and that if there had been a man, we would most certainly have seen and or heard him, especially if he was that close to us, as my brother-in-law said he was standing right beside us. Weird. Regardless of our denials, he insisted that there was an older man with a long gray beard standing standing with us at the top of the trail. Needless to say, our experience, coupled with the history of the park, most definitely had to have been something paranormal. I'm shocked that my wife and I weren't even scared, though. And we've gone back since in hopes to replicate the situation, which has yet to ever happen. I hope you enjoyed my tale in the woods. I look forward to Wednesday mornings at work now because of your amazing show. Aww. It's everything I want in a podcast. Also, I just want to say showbiz. That's how they do it in Hollywood. <laughs> Sincerely, Jonathan. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Man, that is that is creepy. It is just, creepy. Just that, yeah, that this other person, that you experienced something weird. Well, two, two people. Right. Two people experienced something weird with the sensory deprivation kind of feeling, mm-hmm. which, um, God, that in itself would be like so unnerving. Yes. And then the extra detail of a third person who did not know about the thing you just experienced. Right. Seeing a, another person that you clearly, oh, that, oh, that is very strange. Very strange. And it did, it just made me think about God. if you live in like the Spokane Coeur d'Alene area and you've been on H- Tubbs Hill, it is, it's like, um. You know, there's a park down here, and right. then there's just this beautiful um, foresty hill. I mean, like, it's completely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. filled with pine trees, and it's beautiful. It overlooks the lake. But when they were talking about the sensory <sighs> deprivation, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, that could be a weird feeling. Because, you know, the forest can be so quiet. Yeah. It can be deafening. But then 
you still hear like a, you hear some little scamper, wow. like, I don't know. I'm not feeling very skeptical in this moment. Like right now, I feel like, God, there's definitely got to be something else out there than what we can see, than what science can show us. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's something else. I don't know what it is, uh, but so where, where these things come from. Like, because how else do you explain something like that? Right. And, and then again, like we said before, like you said earlier this episode, if just one little thing that science doesn't go, oh yeah, that's totally that. Just one, it opens up a door to what the fuck else is out there. Which is oftentimes why I have to like rein it back in and be like, nope, 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 nope. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. how would you ever sleep again? I know. Right? I know, yeah. Do you want me to lighten the mood? Sure. Do you remember last week when I was wearing my geranium bracelet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were yeah, like yeah. laughing about flower power and this is ridiculous. So I got an email that was like, um, I think you got it wrong. It's germanium, which is an actual like metal or it's not geranium. Germanium. Oh, germanium. <laughs> that makes more sense. Because I was like, why is there like, I mean, not that I know anything about germani germanium, but that's better than a geranium metal. Uh-huh. Funny. Uh huh. <laughs> but he, he, there was only one person who called me out on it, though. And that email, I, I didn't print it up. I, I read it and was like, oh my God. Okay. I okay. often like will mark it unread to reply. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, oh, That's God. an easy one. That's an easy mistake to me. I mean, they're so close. Oh, God. But that odd. was so funny. <laughs> so now, be, now, now, before, yes, before we talk about our little uh, situation the other yeah. night where, where uh, I was apparently mean to you. Such an ass. And I want to share the story of who I saw this morning. And I'm Please. Gonna, and I'm going to post a, a video of this guy. Oh, you took a video? I did. I did. I, I, I felt a little bit, but it was just so odd. It's not the best video, but I'll share the story in the caption too. But like uh, Dan Cummins Comedy is my Instagram. I'm going to put it on there later today because it was- Okay, funny guy. This morning, taking the dogs, Penny and Ginger, to their little doggy daycare here mm -hmm. in Coeur d'Alene. And it's it snowed really hard here the last couple of days, mm -hmm. and uh, too much for the you know the, the streets, the side, the freeways clear. The side streets have a lot of snow on them. Right. So I'm pulling on onto Hazel on this one little side street, and there is so much snow on the ground, and then there is a full grown man riding a children's bicycle. <laughs> down, I've seen this guy down the middle of the road. Oh, you've seen this guy. Uh huh. And he's kind of like pushing it with his foot. And he's holding, and this is what freaked me out at first. He is holding in his left arm what seems to be a dead child. What? Oh, it was like, what in the fuck? I'm um, like limp little arm hanging down. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like an unconscious. Uh, and so, yeah, so I'm like uh, concerned. So I'm taking the video, hoping that it's not that. And also, like, do I need to show this to the police? Also, do I need to call 911? Do I need to call the police? So, yes. So I, so I pull up next to him. And, and then uh, pull up past him and then get out of the truck to get a good look at this guy. Yeah. Uh, and he is a, he seems a little off mm -hmm. and he is holding a giant doll, like a Raggedy Ann kind of style cloth Stop doll, but bigger it. with his big head and it's filthy. Ugh. And the doll is wearing a coat and he's holding the doll under his arms, looking like a dude out of a horror movie, scooting his little bike <sighs> on down the street like I'm oh not even there. Oh my God. I was like, what in the fuck? Did, now, did you get video from all angles? I didn't get a good one from the face because I felt too guilty, like, filming him dead on when mm -hmm. I got out of the car. I know I have that problem, too. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to, because, like, that that's weird. You know, like, yeah. a stranger all in your face like that, you know, like, yeah. but, so I got a sneaky video, but I didn't get a, you see him passing by, mm -hmm. but I've just, I'm like, oh my, it was, like, truly something out of, like, a weird, like, if it would have been dead silent, you would have had some, some weird creepy spooky music like circusy music if joe had been behind you with like a calliope kind a of calliope kind of music but yeah. it's like this this is the guy who is he's taking his bike to or from a very haunted house for sure where people are dying or have just died or about to die yeah when uh th this makes me think about um when i did a very brief stint in real estate someone uh -huh. there was this guy that was well known amongst other realtors, or at mm -hmm. least amongst like a circle of realtors that I knew, um, that they were like, you never go there. And I was like, what? Because when you are in real estate, you know, like yeah. sometimes you get those postcards in the mail, like, hey, if you want to know what's going on in your neighborhood, let me know. And there was one house that they said you know ever go to? Right, because I was like, f they call it farming. So I was like farming this one neighborhood. Okay. And somehow it came up because the person had gotten it and called me and then by chance, I like was talking to another realtor. I was like, oh, so this person. Yeah, yeah blah, -de blah 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 yeah. person said that you had previously kind of worked with them. And he, this other realtor was like, you do not go there. 
And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't know what's wrong with that guy. I don't know what's wrong with that person. Uh, when you go in their house, they have like a, a rack of ties and like, like just like in the living room. Mm -hmm. And then like, that's next to something else. that's like weird and out of place. And it has this like Dexter vibe Ah. and like, uh, like he, and, and I did speak to this person on the phone and he felt certifiable. Okay. Yeah. And it was, it just had this vibe of like, and he kept trying to like get me to come over and I was like, what the fuck? Should be on some kind of list. And sadly, wanted, I mean, like full to disclosure. Try on your skin. Well, full disclosure, I, I, I want to say that he was a veteran, okay. and it made me so sad because I remember yeah. having this feeling of like someone needs to get this man yeah, some he's PTSD. Se- severely mentally ill. Yeah, like PTSD, like really needs maybe help. Some other stuff. But also, it's just like you know, you just don't know. Like you see that guy going down the street, right. you don't know what his deal is. Yep. He could be severely mentally ill. Yep. He could be a complete psychopath. Yep. He could just or, be... Or he could be bringing the doll to play with the dead child companion. Yep. Right. Like a little kid Maybe, skeleton. Was he headed towards the cemetery? Uh, yeah. I, I went and found him again, actually, because I was so curious. I yeah. found him on another side street. What was he doing? Scoot along, hold his baby doll. A giant, like three foot long, four foot long, maybe even baby doll. Just uh, looking straight ahead, just kind of uh, dead in the eyes. Was he clean or dirty? He was dirty. He was dirty. Uh, and And he just... If I was casting a horror movie, he would be like the henchman. He would be like – he wouldn't be the mastermind of the horror, but he would be like the guy who like, you know, you the, the, kid, the kid gets killed and then he takes the kid and, and arranges the kid in the attic with the ah, other kids. stop it. I know. He had that vibe. Yikes. You'll have to show me the video later. I, he's babysitting the kids right now. Oh, I cool. Just, I hired him. Good job. I want to give him some perspective. Like five bucks an hour? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you don't fucking do your chores. Then Carl and Baby Doll gets to watch you today. Carl? Carl and the doll. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to talk so, about our, our, our tiff. Our tiff. Dan and I are not a couple that fights generally. Like we're just not, we're not screamers. Like it's not, mm-hmm. I don't, we really just get along quite fabulously. We're very lucky that way. Mm-hmm. Mostly because we can joke about everything and just kind of work through things. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's see today. So it was like two or three days ago. There's a really big snowstorm coming through town. It was, uh, it was Friday night. Friday night. Okay. Mm-hmm. So really snowy. Had we just, what had we done that night? Uh, we, we'd like come back from like a movie. Yeah, we had a great yeah. night. Like we had a great night. Up until the very end. Up until we, the very end. <laughs> we saw a great movie. We saw Just Mercy. Yes. Is that the name oh, of it? Oh, man. so good. I've never seen, I've never seen you so, cry more during a movie. Oh, so heavy, so poignant. Yeah. Yeah, it was really very, good. very good. Important. I would say it's an important movie to, to watch. I think so. I think so. Yeah, very well done. So we had a great night. We had popcorn. We had uh, we had dinner before then. At uh, we went. We, Rocco's was closed, so we had to go somewhere else. <laughs> we went, for to went to Red Robin. Went to Red Robin. Red Robin. Went to Tasty it, it Burger. Was, well, because it was so shitty outside that mm-hmm. everybody everything was, was closed. Everything was closing early. There was four people in yep. the movie theater, including us. Mm-hmm. We went back. I had a drink. I had some weed. Yes. Uh, and that's that plays in this a little bit because I was so ready to go to bed. I, I intentionally yes. knocked myself out Dan with, was with an edible. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna get some good sleep. You know, I've been tired. And I am all I am falling asleep in bed as Lindsay is uh, is finishing up her brushing her teeth in the bathroom. Yes. And so I, ready to sleep. So he's in bed, snuggled up with the dogs. I'm in mm-hmm. the bathroom doing my routine. Yeah. And we uh, above our mirror is like eight lights, mm-hmm. like it, you know the long, like round vanity light thing, right? Yeah. And I'm in the bathroom, and I go to close the bathroom door to use the restroom, and uh-huh. the lights flicker on and off, on and off. No other lights in the house did that. Uh-huh. Just there, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And, I, and Dan's like, "Huh?" I hear him. Well, you came. In, uh, you hold came, on, okay. hold on. And then I tried to close the door again, mm-hmm. and the lights flickered again. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, what is happening? And then I did it again and it didn't. So then I finish up and I come and I'm like, baby, oh my God, I am freaked the fuck out at this mm-hmm. point. Like that's it. My heart is racing. I'm yeah. terrified. I get into bed. Dan is like, Yeah, what? I'm falling asleep. What? And, then, and then so I'm woken up from the beginning of what I was hoping to be a peaceful slumber. <laughs> And because I'm, I'm and terrified. I'm told, and I'm told about light flickering, and I believe I said. <laughs> you said, it's I'm probably like, it's from a, the snowstorm. I said, it's probably from the s- snowstorm. And in my head, I'm like, is a light flicker. Like, if I'm going to be woken up, there needs to be like a bar. There needs to be, it can't be light what? flicker. Yeah, yeah, Oh, can't be a light flicker? The no, lights no, no. have never flickered in our house, care. ever. Light flicker, wait till, you wait till the morning. Uh, if it's, it has to be. Ab- <laughs> uh, I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> it has to be above. It has to be like demon child approaches you. 
monster in the mirror says, I will kill you. Then I'm like, hey, yeah, fucking you wake me up. But if it's like light flickering, if it's like an orb, it may be like a, a scary mist. You wait till morning. You shelve it. A scary put mist. A pin in it. You put a pin in it. And no you, way. And you let me know you in the morning. Not, you do not. You do not. Because also, the bedroom light was still on. So you were in bed with the bedroom lights still on. I wish and, that demon would have just told you to shut up and go to sleep. <laughs> and your light in the bedroom <laughs> didn't flicker. So Right. The, yeah, on. My light was off. I was trying to go to sleep. No, was, the light, no it wasn't. The light was fucking on. Because ah, I had to turn it. Stoned. Right. Right. So I had to turn it off when I came into the bedroom. So I came in. And then I get into bed. And you were giving me no fucks. Yeah. No sympathy given. I was just, I was just hoping that if I could just shut you up quick, <laughs> but not even like but I a, could fall back asleep. But you didn't. Even, and you did ruin my sleep that night. I don't care. You didn't even put your arm around me. You didn't try I to. I was assume. annoyed. If you would have taken three minutes to be like, babe, it's okay, and just said like what you, what, if you would have said to start with what you said okay. ten minutes later, right? I everything know. would have been fine. But so, so in the future, so, I put a three minute timer on, <laughs> and here's what we do: and I soothe you for uh, three minutes, uh, and then when it dings. If you're not soothed, you got to shut the fuck up and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we need a soothing timer in our bedroom. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> so Dan's giving me no sympathy, yeah. no love, just mm-hmm. as like the penny is in between us. He won't move penny <laughs> to like just rub my arm and let penny me know it's okay. Mm-hmm. So I just like start scrolling on my phone because I'm like, well, I've got to do something to get my mind off oh, of yeah, what just happened. Was, I was mad about and that. And then he's like, what the fuck are you doing? I was mm-hmm. like, what? Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> We don't speak to each other that yeah, way. Full screen. Well, you woke me up, and then you full screen brightness. You didn't even dim your brightness. I did after you were like, "Well, could you? Your brightness is all the way up." Yeah, it's annoying. Uh huh. Do you know how many times you wake up in the middle of the night and stare at ESPN and don't turn the brightness down? And I've never once called you out on it until this moment. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Hmm. I try to. Sh- I use my body as a shield to stop the light. <laughs> I do. I lean over. Well, it doesn't work. Okay. All right. Okay, that's fair. We so talked. We talked about it. We so, talked it out. So Dan doesn't. So then I finally like. I'm like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh no, that's what made it worse. Is I was like, well, if I can't fucking go to sleep because I'm scared, you're not going to sleep. Yep. That's what you punished sent me. It. Yeah, because I was pissed that you weren't helping me. You weren't mm-hmm. supporting me. And then I think that that was like <sighs> a big deep breath from you. And then you moved Penny. And then you held me. And I went to sleep. If we have some kind of infestation, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look up some demonic ritual to get like a sleep demon to come into our house. Just sleep for a hundred years. Just make you sleepier. So it's like you know, if the one ghost scares you, hopefully I can get the sleep demon just kind of like just kind of nod you off. <laughs> and then you can just like dream about the Hat Man. <laughs> right, I, don't, right. I don't. I don't think that like one demon's like, oh, don't worry, I'm a little less shitty than the other one. I'll just let you sleep. I don't know. Maybe the demon will be happy that if I'm, work, I'm if I'm working with it, if I'm giving, if I'm offering the demon someone to torture. Oh, you're offering me up to torture? I missed that. What? Yeah, yeah. Demon, the demon makes gets to make you sleepy, and I don't know, fuck with you. But then I get to sleep peacefully. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. You're the worst, <laughs> absolute worst. <laughs> but that was our little argument. Ken, if you would have just been nice, I, I know, and be I, nice. I, I, I be nice, be nice. Because when it happens <sighs> to you, I'm so sleepy. But yeah, yeah. But when it happens to you, mm-hmm. you are not going to let it go. You are like a dog with a bone. If I see a ghost thingy, uh, yep, you're gonna you're gonna have a moment. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fair. And then you. And then I. Okay. So if I have my moment and you get angry with me, I have no right to be upset. Right. And I'm setting a three minute timer. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three three minutes of soothe. And that's it. That's all you get. And that's it. That's it. And then and it's if you over. can't be soothed, you head outside and find that dog chopping that wood and help him out. <laughs> help him out. <laughs> Work yourself into a state of exhaustion so you can fall asleep. Uh, did you have any other special uh, things this week? I don't. It was our kids' birthdays this past week. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Ky- happy birthday, Kyler Monroe. Um, Kyler's not, not now- that you're allowed to watch a show because well, we don't want to deal with you. Kyler, I guess Kyler could be. Yeah. Uh, but we love we love those little dingles. Little dummies. Little dummies. Little dummies. Yay. Uh, that's all for today. I'm very excited for next week. I've been getting ahead on some story. And I think, oh, man, next week's stories. Stop Yeek. it. Ugh. Well, I hope some of the scariest ones yet. I hope you can't sleep all week, and I'm not going to deal with it. Okay, three minutes. Three minutes. Please, please keep sending in your, your horror stories to my story at scaredtodeathpodcast.com. For everything else, info at scaredtodeathpodcast.com. Thanks for listening, watching Scared to Death, Bad Magic Production. 
Thanks to the Bad Magic Productions team, Harmony Vella Camp on social media, Joe Paisley producing, directing, Zach Flannery part of the team as well. Thanks to Sophie Evans Yay! For, for, for jumping in and uh, finding some of these creepy stories, which is awesome. Our new like research assistant. Mm-hmm. Thanks to uh, Joe Paisley, Zach Cohen, and Jeffrey Montoya for the sound beds. And thanks to Heather Rylander for taking over the My Story at Scared to Death Pod- Scared to Death Podcast.com emails. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you want even more content at Scared to Death Podcast. Subscribe, Bad Magic Productions on YouTube if you want to watch. Enjoy your nightmares. Soothe each other for three minutes. Three minutes. Don't be a Darren. Don't be a don't be a don't be a Darren. Don't there was no Darren. Darren's in today's story, so that's good. There was no one being like, come on. Just a small reminder. Small reminder. Don't be a Darren. Enjoy your nightmares, creeps and peepers. Hope you were scared to death. If spirits threaten me in this place. Fight water by water and fire by fire. Banish their souls into nothingness and remove their powers until the last trace. Let these evil beings flee through time and space. Evil may pass through but has no home here within scared to death.